Welcome everyone. My name is Jamira Burley and I am the co-founder of Gen Why Not. Gen Why Not is a web-based platform that uses different medias to engage young people around the world on social and political issues that affect them. Gen Why Not excitingly has teamed up with Generation Progress, the youth outreach arm of the Center for American Progress. And just this past year, they launched their Gun Violence Prevention Network, where they have a cohort of young people from all over the country who care about the issue of how can we, as millennials, prevent gun violence from happening in our communities. We have developed a three-part series that starts and launched today, so I'm super excited. So this first installment, we're going to look at what is gun violence and how is gun violence impacting millennials? What are they doing about solving it? And how can we, we, we as millennials redefine how it's impacting us as a particular generation? In all seriousness, this is a very serious topic, um, particularly in our country and how it affects young people. To put some facts to the conversation, 33 people in the U.S. are murdered by guns every single day. And in our country, millennials between the ages of 17 to 29 are at the highest risk. Children, American children particularly, children and teenagers are four times more likely to, gun, to die by gun violence um, than our counterparts in Canada, and seven times more likely than Israel, and 65 times more likely than the U.K. So if we're talking about a generation who is constantly being impacted by one particular issue, it's gun violence. And so today, I, I'm happy to be joined by our three lovely guests who all work on the issue of gun violence from very three different perspectives. Um, and I'm super excited about the conversation that we're going to have today. But I want to turn it over to um, the ladies and ask them to briefly introduce themselves um, and to also talk about the organization that they represent. Mary Pat, we can actually get started with you. Yeah. So with Generation Progress, pretty much what I do is, in the Southeast region, um, mobilize and work with young people in my region, um, encouraging them to do projects, working with them on the projects, hosting Twitter rallies, um, and just really promoting and pushing the Generation Progress um, campaigns and projects that they have, mm -hmm. um, and such as Protect All Women, Fight for the 44, um, and projects and campaigns such as that with the National Action Network. Pretty much what I do is just encouraging young people all over the country um, to do whatever their heart desires when it comes to community service because we understand that no community is the same. Each community is different and, um, you know, my passion for gun violence might not be um, the young people in the organization's passion. They might want to work on fatherless homes or whatever else it may be that they want to work on. Thank you. No. Sierra? Okay, hi, I'm Sierra Ibarra. I'm a producer on um, the student-made documentary Beyond the Crossfire. It's a documentary examining the root causes of violence in our society and what young people like us can do about it. And it, it highlights different causes of violence and what programs are in place to combat these different causes of violence. And the students involved are working on making real change in those areas in San Diego. Thank you for coming. Lauren? Hi, so my name is Lauren Spiegel, and I work at the Center for American Progress, which is the parent organization that Generation Progress sits within. I work specifically on our gun policy team, so we focus on mainly on doing research on different areas of gun violence. So our most recent project, which was already mentioned, um, the Protect All Women project, really focuses on the intersection of gun violence and domestic violence and how that affects women in the United States. Well, again, thank you, ladies, for joining the conversation. And I think it's interesting to point out that we literally have three different perspectives from research, advocacy, and media. So when we think about gun violence and how it impacts people, I think we should start with research. And so, Lauren, my first question for you would be, what is the what research is um, Center for American Progress or Generation Progress currently doing around gun violence? And what is some of um, the most startling facts or figures you have noticed over the past few years? Sure. So I think, um, as I previously mentioned, most of our research recently has been focusing on the intersection of gun violence and women, particularly as it relates to domestic violence. Um, you know, some of the stats you mentioned earlier, Americans in general experience much higher levels of gun violence um, across the board than do people in other developed countries. Um, and I think that is particularly true for young people, and it's also particularly true for women especially women that are in abusive relationships. Um, in the U.S., you know, more so, I think, now than in the past, um, women in abusive relationships are really affected by gun violence. In the past 10 years, 
more than half of women who are killed by their intimate partners. So that could include dating partners, spouses, um, former dating partners, former spouses, or murdered with guns. So that's a really, that's a, guns are clearly causing a lot of deaths in those relationships. And we also know that guns are much more likely to turn an abusive relationship um, into a, like, have a lethal outcome. So in households where there is a history of domestic violence and the abuser also has access to a gun, a woman is 20 times more likely to die than in a household where there is no gun. So just as you can see from those numbers, guns really do make a big difference in domestic mm -hmm. violence situations. They also, for youth, you know, as you said before, great, they're very important, um, you know, guns, in 2010 were the second leading cause of death among people between the ages of 15 and 24. So there really is an acute problem with gun violence and death in these two populations. It's, it's interesting that we should probably mention that this month is actually Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, so for people who didn't know, I would, I would definitely encourage you to take this opportunity to go to um, the Generation Progress website and look at the research that they're currently doing, um, particularly as it relates to women and guns. Um, and to jump over to Sierra um, in regards to media, we watch the media, um, media play a role in how people get access to information all the time. Sometimes we get the full story, sometimes we get people version of the truth. And so my question for you really is, how is media playing a role in the, the gun violence epidemic, particularly around how solutions are being developed? And then also, what are some of the stories that you've been able to hear um, through your research and through engaging people using media um, around gun violence? So, I mean, media has just a huge role in preventing gun violence, I mean, or at least reducing it. I mean, just looking at everything that's going on just through Twitter itself, you can see that there's these ideas going around, people supporting it, and it's just a faster way for people to communicate, and it allows people to um, really connect with people in other parts of the country and work together towards a common goal. And as far as stories we've heard, there are just so many. I mean... There are so many organizations out there where, you know, they have they start out in a small school, but once word gets out about them, once they start using videos and showing people what they're doing, um, momentum really gains behind them. There's one program we worked with, um, BAM, out in Chicago, where once people started hearing about what they're doing to help reduce violence in their communities, they went all the way to the White House and ended up getting $50 million. No, I think that's pretty amazing, and I think we we sometimes look at media as um, the devil in a sense because they, they, we don't get the full story a lot of times, and also they like to um, portray um, particular segments of the community in not a very good light. Um, so thank you for mentioning that. And Mary Pat, briefly, um, you're doing amazing work in Atlanta around engaging young people, particularly the younger generation under 18, and how to, how to, how to be advocates for issues that are impacting their generation and how to really speak up um, and to really talk to policymakers and change um, the way that policymakers view and engage young people. So what have you seen young people do in regards to gun violence, and how does um, organizing young people play a role in the work that you do? Organizing young people, I believe it plays a really big role because young people understand the statistics, they know the statistics on gun violence, but they don't believe that they can um, do something. So as National Youth Director of National Action Network, as an RO for Generation Progress, um, you know, really just sitting mm -hmm. down with young people, giving them a plan, um, and I, well, not necessarily a plan, but showing them what they can do, showing them how to do a community service project. Um, you know, showing them, you know, how to measure their steps and, and all of that. So that plays a big role when it comes to organization. Um, but in regards, to, I'm sorry, Jameer, what was the fir first portion of your question? How are young people playing a role in, the, in changing the way gun violence impacts their communities? Yes, and secondly, you know, um, you know, she talked about media. Young people live gun violence. You know, their, their friends and brothers and cousins, you know, get killed due to gun violence. So what they're doing is they're redefining it um, by essentially saying it's not cool, by, um, by speaking about it, by coming out against it via social media, Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook. So I think that those are some steps that young people are doing when it comes to gun violence. Um, but that just population of young people the world has ever seen. We have young people who are creating everything from Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, who are creating their own foundations and nonprofits all across the country.
history. Um, I'm curious, is gun violence a defining moment for the millennial generation? And if so, what are the tactics um, or tools that you see young people actually utilizing to solve some of today's most pressing issues? And we can start with anyone, um, but I think I'm curious to hear with you uh, what all of you have to say in regards to, is this a defining moment for millennials? I think can go first. <laughs> um, you know, I think this is a defining moment. Gun violence has obviously been around for a very long time, and while there have been some advances that were made in the past, you know, in 1994, um, in 1993 as well with the handgun control bill. It sort of seems like in terms of at the federal level that stalled out recently. Um, you know, not because <laughs> there's not public support for it, but really just because of our elected officials and the fact that a lot of them just won't vote on the bills that we need. And so I think one thing that is really promising thing about millennials taking on the issue is just how much energy there is around it, um, you know, especially with social media and Twitter and just really raising awareness about how much this affects our generation mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, being able to actually capitalize on that. And I know recently there have been a lot of successes at the state level in terms of getting different legislation passed, especially around, you know, what I was talking about earlier with domestic violence. Mm -hmm. um, seven states just in this year alone have added new um, categories of prohibited purchasers for people who've been convicted of misdemeanor stalking or misdemeanor levels of domestic abuse. So that's really promising and I think the more that young people realize that these issues affect them, um, you know, even just looking at the makeup of relationships today, like more than almost half of all violence that's committed in a domestic partner in a domestic relationship is committed by dating partners which is very different from what it looked like 20 or 30 years ago when most of that was happening in marriages. And so getting these protections for people in our generation, you know, that's really important. And I, I think it's something that people are interested in doing. Sierra and Mary Pat, I mean, both of you are definitely still a part of the millennial generation. Do you feel like this is a defining moment for, for you? I, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was going to say I, I do. And I believe that, you know, in the 60s, you really had the civil rights movement, um, and I feel like this is one thing, other than you know the issues like police brutality going on today, I feel like this is one piece of the puzzle that's um, pushing young people to action, making them really um, step up to the plate and actually do something about it. I feel like this is our, our movement when it comes to, um, I believe that this gun violence is a part of our issue when it comes to like the civil rights movement. This is our moment. Um, so I do feel like they are redefining. This is a, a huge moment in time um, in the in the millennial movement, and I believe that gun violence plays a big piece in it, along with other things like police brutality um, and things that we've seen in the news today. Great point, Sierra. You're on mute. There we go. Okay, <laughs> like what Mary Pat said. Um, it's just there's so many young people who are feeling empowered today not to just, you know, sit around and let their family members and their loved ones die at the hands of guns. They're empowered to actually go and make a change, not just march, not just rally, but actually speak to the people in leadership and make real changes toward preventing and reducing any kind of violence. Sorry, all of us have seen um, how... One, all of us have seen different forms of violence, everything from suburban violence, school violence, to urban violence. And we know that there are multi a multitude of, of, of reasons why those issues happen, um, as well as there are a multitude of solutions that many people are suggesting to solve those issues, both suburban and urban violence. And so I'm curious, with all of you working in the intersections in which you do, meaning, Mary Pat, you work with young people all over the country, Lauren, you work with research and how to engage people around research and providing them the tools that they need to kind of take the information back to their communities. And Sierra, I mean, you're doing media, which is like a huge portion of how can we get the message out there and educate people on the issue. So in regards to the intersections in which you work, how can, what are the barriers do you think to um, doing cross-community and cross um, cross-issue based collaboration for suburban and urban violence knowing that there are a lot of um, individual issues that are impacting those communities. Sierra, do, can we start with you? There we go. I mean, just 
there's, like you said, there's just urban, suburban violence, and we really do need to bridge these. There's no us and them. We're working on separate issues. We're all working toward one common goal. And, I mean, just building an understanding behind that. I mean, many suburban kids don't have an understanding of what it's like to live in an urban area where this kind of violence happens regularly, I mean, rather than isolated events. I think just building an understanding and making people realize that, you know, we aren't just fighting for just our our cause, just for reducing suburban gun violence. No, we're working together to reduce all gun violence. Well, um, I, I agree, and I'm going to piggyback off of what um, Ms. Sierra said. She, she's absolutely right, and I my take on the whole thing is, the heart can't feel what the eyes can't see. So her job and role um, when it comes to media plays a big role when it comes to um, gun violence. I believe also when it comes to policy and legislation, um, I believe that the NRA plays a huge or a major role when it comes to gun violence and they're a barrier um, in itself. You know, with all the money that they have, it's kind of hard to um, have campaigns and to pass great legislation um, that protects young people. Anytime that you have to send children to school with bulletproof backpacks. Any time that you um, are afraid that your children are going to be shot and killed on a bus on their way home from a, a, a party is a big problem. Um, and I believe that people with money aren't understanding it. And it's because they don't go through it. It's because they don't see it. Um, and so they decide to just ignore. And I am talking about some um, politicians. Um, but majority of the ones who accept money from organizations like the NRA. It's interesting that you mentioned um, a bulletproof backpack. I actually want to take this time to shout out the Dream Defenders because they just launched a new campaign called um, Vest or Vote, talking to voters about whether or not young people, um, whether or not young people have to walk to school with bulletproof vests, as Mary Pat mentioned, or we as voters need to actually get out and demand that our electoral um, and that our policymakers actually put together a policy that reflects what the community want, particularly around gun violence. Um, I also want to take this time for all of our viewers who are currently watching. Um, if you want to join the conversation, please use the hashtag Jim Why Not, as well as the hashtag um, Protect All Women. Um, you can tweet at Jim Why Not at, and at Jim Why Not Live or Generation Progress at, at Gen Progress. Um, with that being said, I want to jump back into the conversation. And Lauren, just to get your, your intake on regarding suburban versus urban violence. I think what I heard from both Sierra and Mary Pat is that we kind of have to get back to values. How do we bring community members from all different types of backgrounds to recognize that we all share the same values? We all want people to live safe. We all want the right to life. We all want children to be able to go to school in a safe environment and to be able to walk home. How do we get back to those values using the research that you've, you're, you're seeing done um, by Generation Progress as well as by CAP? Sure. So yeah, I think that's a really important point that I think historically different communities have sort of looked at gun violence from different perspectives and, you know, suburban gun violence, urban gun violence, um, you know, mass shootings are one thing, everyday shootings are another thing. But I do think what Sierra and Mara Pat were saying is like absolutely true. You know, research shows both of these things are prevalent while mass shootings, you know, don't happen as often. They are happening at an increasing rate. I know the FBI just put out a report last month that shows that, you know, in the past four or five years, the rate at which mass shootings, which frequently happen in schools, occur um, has gone up significantly. So these things are becoming more of an everyday occurrence, which is deeply troubling, but something that we can also do something about. And so I think looking at gun violence from this, you know, it really does affect everyone in our country. Um, the numbers are there. We have the research that shows it and, you know, getting back to what Mary Powell was saying about the NRA and, you know, different barriers that we have to getting things done. Um, I think the more education we do and the more outreach we do and the more people become aware of the fact that, you know, this really is something that affects everyone in the U.S. and something can be done to deal with it. It's not like there aren't solutions. Um, the, you know, education is really important, which I guess is where research comes in. Um, to do and I, I, I want to take that point that you just made at the end, the barriers that are preventing. We know that gun violence is impacting such a large population of the U.S. We know that young people are being impacted at extremely high levels. We know that women, particularly who are in domestic abusive situations, are can be extremely impacted by guns. Why isn't anyone doing anything? 
why why is it taking so long for the U.S. to do something in regards to this? I talk to um, my friend from the U.K. all the time, David, and he's just like, I don't understand how the U.S. is still debating this issue. And so, I, I, ladies, I'll turn it over to you because all of you do this work. Why why do you think nothing has really happened in regards to sustainable policy? And what do you think are the barriers to getting some sustainable policy passed in Congress? Mary Pat? Um, I would have to say that people believe, well, I believe, one, that they're afraid. I know a lot of politicians are afraid because you have the right side and you have the left side. Some people believe that it's their right. Um, and they'll argue you that to death without really understanding exactly what that means. And some people believe that there shouldn't be guns in general. So um, I believe that people are afraid to um, upset certain people. From It's all politics. I believe that certain politicians aren't passing good legislation helping people because they want to get back into office and they want to keep the dollars that they have. So um, not necessarily that they don't know the statistics because we all do, but um, just playing politics with people's lives. Um, I believe that's the only reason why the United States is where it is when it comes to gun violence. Um, and I do think that we need to look at the UK and other countries that don't have as much gun violence and use the legislation and laws that they already have without reinventing um, the wheel, just looking at their laws. Point. And Sierra, I'm curious, how do you, um, what are the ways in which you think media, um, or you, media can be utilized to inform voters to kind of hold their elected officials accountable to make sure that policy is enacted? Well, I mean, just anyway, really, I mean, social media, making sure, you know, tweeting at your politicians saying, you know, you said you were going to do this, but are you? Are you really holding true to what you said you would do? And again, just, you know, if we can show support that a majority of us do believe in these tougher legislation, then why aren't the politicians doing that? Just showing that we do have a strong base and a lot of people, a lot of people are pushing for it and it's really put the pressure, put the pressure on them to really make change in that area. And Lauren, I'll take it back to research. How can community members and young people utilize the information that you've gathered and Center for American Progress and Gen Progress have gathered to kind of take that back to their communities and educate their, their friends, their family members, their teachers, and, and really start to um, move the needle on gun violence? <laughs> um, well, yeah, you know, I think we have a lot of really good tools out there. I know you mentioned the hashtag protect all women and we actually just launched a website today protectallwomen.org that has an interactive map for all 50 states that highlights key statistics um, in all of those states and sort of covers four different areas of laws in those states where um, there could be stronger laws to prevent gun violence so I think tools like that are really important you know it's an easy way to just learn pretty quickly about gun violence in your state or community um, and different things that can be done to mitigate that. Another thing that I think is really important is just actually taking the research we have and the numbers we have and expressing to elected officials that this is an issue people care about. You know, one thing you always hear when you talk to different offices um, on Capitol Hill is, you know, politicians respond to what their constituents are calling in about, emailing them about, sending them letters about. Um, and so it's one thing to educate people, but then it's also really important to actually do the outreach and, you know, have people's voices heard in their elected officials' offices. Um, and so I think just encouraging people, you know, through social media, through email, however you want to do it, um, to really reach out and, you know, make it known that guns are an issue that matter and will matter in elections, I think that's really important. Great point going into our last question. I'll just turn it and ask all three of you again, which is what is one thing that young people can do right now to get engaged with this issue around gun violence? And, and why is it important for them to care about it, even if they're in a community where gun violence isn't a prevalent issue? I mean, Sierra, can we start with you? Yeah, I would just say the number one thing is just get involved. There are so many different pieces to gun violence. It's not just the gun. There are also what causes it different in like you can work on, you know, getting people mentoring programs in need so that when they do feel these angry emotions inside, they have the correct outlets rather than acting out in violence. 
there are so many different pieces that go into it and whatever it is that is your passion go for it and get involved and make a change in it awesome thanks Mary Pat I think things that young people can do right now is do what they've been doing thinking outside the box and I think um, you know we also have to hold some adults accountable um, and allowing young people to use those out-of-the-box thoughts and ideas when it comes to gun violence or how we can end it or how we can promote it um, and just and just going through it that way um, because young people have great ideas like I said before they live this you know they, they have brothers sisters and cousins and and friends that um, do um, you know that do die due to gun violence and I think that adults also need to start teaching young people um, about gun violence although you know, they feel like it's scary or they don't want to like traumatize their, their kids, you know, it's important because now, you know, shooters are going into elementary schools harming mm -hmm. children. So I think that we need to start teaching our young people as early as elementary school instead of waiting until they're in middle and high school about gun violence because at that point they've already become um, desensitized to gun violence. Um, and I believe that, you know, that's pretty much, I'm just going to leave it at that. Thanks. Lauren? Yeah, so I think um, both of those points are really important. I feel like there's sort of two different approaches you can take as a young person to dealing with gun violence. One, obviously, is if you're 18 or older and you can vote, you know, the whole, you know, talking to your elected officials, you know, voting <laughs> where you think your vote will matter in terms of changing um, the culture around gun violence. That's really important. But also the community organizing portion is really important, you know, for people who are under 18, even, you know, for people who are over 18, and changing the culture around gun violence. Um, you know, it's ingrained in a lot of communities, and especially the more mass shootings we start to see, as Mary Pat was saying, people become desensitized to gun violence. So really just making the point that it's not okay, it's not something anyone should be used to, and trying to change that from an earlier age so that people grow up thinking, you know, this isn't something that I should have to live with, and I want to work to make sure this isn't a part of my day-to-day -day reality. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, ladies, again, for joining us at Gym Why Not. And for those viewing, again, to join the conversation, just, this is not the end of the conversation. To join, use the hashtag Gym Why Not and use the hashtag Protect All Women. Um, this episode, we really wanted to take an opportunity just to kind of lay the foundation, just to talk about gun violence from a very surface level, about what is happening, what is going on around the issue in regards to research and media. Um, but we're, um, I should mention, we have two more installments coming up where we're going to dig a little bit deeper about the issue, about what's going on, about what more young, what actions young people need to take in their communities to kind of help to move the issue forward. Um, but I do want to shout out Generation Progress for this partnership and for the opportunity for us to engage more young people and to make them realize that this issue is important to them um, beyond just election day. Um, in addition to that, for since we always like action and we want people to get involved in their communities, in their schools, um, or even on the national level, there are some amazing organizations doing great work. We already mentioned Generation Progress. There is Campaign to Unload. There is Moms Demand Action. There is Mothers in Charge. There is Ceasefire um, slash Cure Violence. There is Dream Defenders. Beyond the Crossfire, there's also Life Camp, which is based in New York, led by Ms. Erica Ford, and there's Every Town and Moms Rising, as well as NAM, which is led by um, National Action Network, which Mary Pat helps to work with. And so there are a multitude of ways for young people to get engaged, and we really encourage you to learn about one of those organizations and to get um, motivated to join the calls. Um, in addition to that, check out the new website or the launch of the new website for protectallwomen.org. It's a great resource. A great resource to use and to get updated information about what's going on in regards to how guns are impacting women. Um, and so with that being said, um, look out for a new, an update for our next installment. And again, thanks everyone for viewing. And Jim Why Not is always here to provide you insight, information, and engaging young people around solution-based dialogue. Have a great night. Thank you.